In case of small children, the corpse is just surged in the river. We may not be aware of the facts, but today the grief is adding immense burden on the environment, our holy rivers and to the forest cover in the Indian subcontinent. In India, nearly 4.5 million tons of wood is used to burn human corpses annually and about 50 to 60 million trees are cut to feed that consumption. These thousand people are dying today, so you can understand that कि रोज कितने टनों लकड़ी के लिए हमें वृक्षों को जो है वो काटना पड़ता है। The amount of air pollution that is being generated, the amount of river pollution that is being done by ashes, half burned bodies, unburned bodies। और पहले कुछ सौ ऐसे ही गंगा में बहा दिए जाते थे, अधजले सौ फेंक दिए जाते थे। या पर्यावरण की दृष्टि से भी ढेर सारी लकड़ी की बर्बादी होती थी। About eight million tons of GHG emissions are being emitted in the atmosphere and about 0.8 million tons of ashes are being dumped into the rivers. Before partition, our forest level in India was more than 42 percent, but unfortunately it has come down drastically to 19.3 percent. It is a double problem. For the cremation, there is a scarcity of wood, and for the burial, there is a scarcity of land. This is Manikarnika Ghat, known for its open cremation ground. On an average, 200 bodies are burned here every day. If we presume that each body requires 500 kilograms of wood, that totals to 1,000 tons of wood daily for this Ghat alone. Scarcity of fuel often results in the incomplete cremation and half-burnt bodies are thrown into the rivers, making it one of the major sources of pollution. There are many wood traders around these ghats. The wood is easily available and is brought on the shore of this ghat from neighboring states. The trading of firewood involves many middlemen before it eventually reaches to the stores of people today. The traditional cremation in an open ground is adding tremendous burden on our fragile environment. As per a survey, the demand for firewood and timber in 2010-11 has risen from 235 million cubic meter to 300 million cubic meter. And on the other hand, safe level of wood drawing from the forest has fallen to 35 million cubic meter from the previous safe level of 48 million cubic meter. The need of the R is to opt for eco-friendly cremations and do our bit for the environment and to save trees. We all have to work towards that. We love our children, our grandchildren. Is it not our responsibility to see that we leave behind a cleaner, healthier environment for them to live? Motivated by the ecological concerns, the people of Agra frequently promote eco-friendly cremation through rallies. This rally is being taken out to promote electric cremation run by the Pajaja Committee. What's so unique about this rally is the presence of women. These women folk generate awareness about electric cremation by distributing pamphlets and making the local people aware of the disadvantages of traditional cremation. विद्यु शब्दाग्रह के संबंध में जो भ्रांतियां हैं, अंतिम संस्कार को लेकर जो लोगों के संबंध में जानकारी का भाव है, हम उसको इस पैम्फलेट के माध्यम से समाज को जागरूक करने का काम कर रहे हैं। एक ये संकल्प पत्र क्षेत्र बजाजा कमेटी विविध कार्यक्रमों के माध्यम से लोगों से भरवाती है, जिसमें लोग स्वेच्छा is just like the traditional cremation and allows the family members to follow all the rituals associated with the last rites of the dead. In this eco-friendly process, heat is generated through electricity instead of wood. Once the rituals are finished, the body is slowly pushed inside the electric chamber and the door is closed. The interior of the closed electric chamber has a temperature of around 800 to 900 degrees Celsius and the body is burnt within 60 to 90 minutes. In India, 
every major or metropolitan city is having electric crematoriums. Some, like in Agra, are running successfully and others not. Some have even been shut down due to low demand. The culprit of this low demand is ignorance and lack of awareness about these facilities. It's time to spread the word and save the trees and the environment. हम इस विद्युत शब्दाग्रह के माध्यम से पूरे वर्ष में जो लगभग एक हजार शब्दा यहाँ होते हैं तो पांच हजार कुंटल लकड़ी यानी पांच हजार पेड़ों को हम नष्ट होने से बचा रहे हैं और इससे पर्यावरण को बहुत बड़ा एक बड़ा संरक्षण मिल रहा है और आने वाले वर्षों में यह संख्या और बराबर बढ़ने वाली है द म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन ऑफ वाराणसी हैज ऑल्सो कंस्ट्रक्टेड एन इलेक्ट्रिक क्रेमेटोरियम एट हरीश चंद्र घाट द चार्जेस हेयर अ वेरी नॉमिनल कंपेयर टू ट्रेडिशनल क्रिमेशन एंड इट्स ऑल्सो रनिंग सक्सेसफुली जस्ट लाइक इन आगरा इलेक्ट्रिक क्रेमेटोरियम के ढेर सारे बेनिफिट्स हैं पहला तो गंगा में प्रदूषण में कमी आती है नंबर दो लकड़ी की खपत नहीं होती है तो लकड़ी न कटने से पर्यावरण हमारा बचता है न तीसरा इसमें समय की बचत हो जाती है और चौथा कि ये सस्ता है इन इंडिया देर इज वन मोर इको फ्रेंडली क्रमेशन सिस्टम गेनिंग पॉपुलैरिटी दीज डेज मोक्षदा द डेली बेस्ड एन जी ओ हैज कम अप विद यूनिक मिक्स ऑफ ट्रेडिशन विद साइंस टू डिस्पोज ऑफ द डेड What's so interesting about this green cremation system is that it uses firewood to cremate the body but to a very limited amount only. It means if in a conventional cremation system we are using about 400 to 500 kg of wood in moksha system we are using about 100 to maximum 150 kg of wood. Burning of less fuel wood helps in reducing an equivalent amount of carbon dioxide emissions. and minimizing global warming to that extent fuel wood being the major component of cost in cremation wood saving offered by the system makes it an affordable alternative to the people from weaker groups of society too the system is practically free of air pollutants like smoke and solid particulate matters and reduces river pollution the main part of this system is the pyre which can withstand high temperature conditions and corrosive environment the body is placed on this pyre with limited amount of wood when the body is burnt due to temperature difference large amounts of air move up towards the chimney this helps in the complete combustion and the temperature could rise to 400 degrees to 500 degrees celsius which eventually burns the body with limited amount of wood specially fabricated trays are used for ash collection which have helped reducing the blocking time of the system to just 2 hours only as compared to that of 3 days in the traditional method once the body is burnt completely and the ashes are removed from the tray the volunteers of mokshada clean the area including the pyre which is then ready for the next cremation the benefits of mokshada green cremation system are number 1 we are saving trees since we are saving wood then we are saving space since on one unit of mokshada green cremation system we can perform about 4 to 5 cremations in a day vis a vis in traditional system you need lot of space as a platform is blocked for 3 days since there is a ritual that ashes are collected after 2 days or 3 days Mokshada has at present installed 50 such units across five states in India and there is huge acceptability to all its units as it is much closer to the traditional cremation system the ministry of environment and forests government of india recognizes the system for its potential to not only address river pollution but also ghg reductions A similar fusion of tradition and technology like mokshada is also being implemented in the state of Andhra Pradesh. The technique uses a gasifier which produces huge flames to cremate the dead bodies. Meet Rajwant Singh Gulati who has been running Swarg Dham cremation ground in the Alwal district of Hyderabad since 1984. It was also with the initiative of Rajwant Singh Gulati 
that the state of Andhra Pradesh saw its first biomass gasifier based cremation system. Everything is very systematic here. The basic idea is the gas is produced out of the wood only, this wood which you see. The normal traditional cremation, the wood is of a long size, but here it is cut and then taken, taken to the machine. The uniform sized chopped wood is then put into the gasifier. The limited amount of wood is then ignited and the gasifier is kept ready to make the producer gas. This is the main part of the biomass gasifier plant where the producer gas is generated in the limited supply of air. This neat and clean gas is then pushed into the closed chamber of the furnace through specially designed nozzle. The entire furnace is engulfed with fire which is of 8 feet in length. The temperature inside the furnace reaches between 800 to 1100 degrees Celsius, which eventually incinerates the body. The project helps to burn the bodies in very limited time. The ashes are available just in two hours time. The project is eco-friendly. It saves on wood and uh, helps in pollution control. We already installed such gasifiers in Tamil Nadu. West Bengal, Pondicherry, now in Andhra Pradesh. This is the first gasifier based crematorium in Andhra Pradesh. And with the awareness these people are creating here, uh, people are uh, knowing about this technology and many inquiries are coming within the Andhra Pradesh and out of the places also. The government is today praising these individual initiatives and so are the people of Hyderabad. to have eco-friendly liquefied petroleum gas or LPG fueled crematorium. The Punjab Pollution Control Board is of the view that the two LPG crematoriums installed in the city would definitely cut down the consumption of firewood and help in the reduction of harmful gases. The infrastructure is almost similar to the biomass gasifier based cremation plant with only difference being the fuel which is used to cremate the body. When a dead body is brought, it is placed on this uh, trolley. All the rituals according to the respective religious like Sikhism, Hinduism and Jainism, they are performed over here. And thereafter, the body is uh, ready to be cremated inside the chamber. Once the body is inside the closed chamber, the eldest son puts a small fire and the doors are closed. LPG fuel is pushed inside the chamber and within few seconds the entire chamber is filled with flames. The temperature inside the chamber rises between 900 to 1100 degrees Celsius that can even burn the hardest bone in the body. The hot air from the chamber is passed through a water tank where the hot air is cooled down. Particulate matter and fly ash are arrested and then the cooled air is sucked by an exhaust fan sent through a chimney to a height of 100 feet into the atmosphere. In our society, there is, a, there is another ritual called Kapal Kriya. It is also very important. And for that Kapal Kriya, we have made the provision into this machine. We remove this window plate. You make a dash on the, the skull of the dead body. This plate, this window is closed and that ritual is completed. The technique takes just an hour to cremate a single body and consumes 10 to 12 kilograms of LPG gas. The idea of using LPG for cremation was initially developed in the state of Kerala where it has become a big hit and people have today readily accepted the change. We installed 35 units uh, in Kerala and um, in Namrasar and 15 uh, units order is in our hand. The people of Amritsar have also accepted the change and today each unit of LPG crematorium is receiving two to three bodies daily. The figure is low but with much publicity and awareness it would definitely increase in the future. My mother Surinder Kaur Ji was original Punjabi Akhbar so they knew that the system started here लकड़ी की बजाय एलपीजी से संस्कार हो जाता है तभी उन्होंने बोला कि यह तो बड़ा अच्छा काम हो गया 
क्योंकि आदमी ने कहा जिंदगी में चाहे एक भी वृक्ष ना लगाया हो पर जब वो यहाँ दुनिया से जाता है तो कम से कम दो वृक्ष अपने साथ ले जाता है कम से कम दो वृक्षों की बली देनी पड़ती है तो तभी उन्होंने शो कर दिया था बता दिया कि अगर मेरा कल को संस्कार करोगे जब मैं यहाँ नहीं रहूँगी तो आप एल की विधि से ही करना इन डेली एल पी जी क्रेमेटोरियम है This is Nigambodh Ghat where 6 units of CNG crematoriums have been installed and they are all working successfully since 2007 CNG jo hai takriban 1.5 ghante ke andar puri body uske andar jal jati hai aur 1.5 ghante ke baad hum logon ko body ki jo asthiyan hain jo raakh hai wo agar chahe vyakti to 1.5 ghante baad le sakta hai The operation of these units is very simple and one can operate them after a week's training We can say this is the cheapest way of cremation with minimum use of energy and till date it's the cleanest fuel. CNG ke andar cremation ke liye sirf 500 rupaye ka humne shuruq rakha hua hai. Hamari dharmik manyata ye hai paryavaran ki drishti se bhi CNG bahut hi mahatvapurna hai. The Zoroastrians have their own way of disposing of the dead. They prefer to expose their dead to the elements. and flesh eating birds within the confines of the towers of silence the act is also considered to be an individual's final act of charity however over the last few decades the alarming decline in the population of vultures has negatively impacted an important right of the parsis in india the vultures used to get dispose of the, the dead body within half an hour time but then all of a sudden all over asia the population of vultures started dwindling and that is when the problems of for the disposal of the dead started taking place lot of bodies started accumulating in the towers and all that the job was indeed difficult but the team members continued experimenting in gujarat and finally came up with an innovative way the solar concentrators these concentrators were initially installed at mumbai and subsequently to other states having parsi populations the system is simple and very eco friendly the concentrator moves along with the sun and uh, the, uh, heats up the body that's why dehydrating it so you don't get any smell and all that and what happens is completely dries up the bones turn into calcium and are flown into the two four streams that are there inside you should know that one disadvantage to the system also karta that is during monsoon when there is no sunlight that is the time the solar concentrators do not work and bodies take a long time to regenerate this is muni seva ashram home to people of all age groups the ashram looks after all the needs of its people there are dispensaries schools day care centers and old age homes The ashram is now planning to install a solar crematorium and initial tests have been proven successful. The open solar crematorium has been built with special Scheffler solar reflector developed specifically for this concept. The reflectors are designed to heat a 2 meter long crematorium chamber to above 700 degrees centigrade. This solar crematorium is not about disposing of a dead body. but it is also to fulfill the emotional desire of the people uh, once the dead body is here then people do what we do traditionally now you can do all the rituals what you would like to do to give to the farewell to the dead body once the dead body is placed in this combustion chamber you slide it inside you close the door from back and one turns this 50 square meter dish and reflects the light through the small opening onto the dead body due to the high concentration of the sun the temperature achieved in the oven is 1200 degrees centigrade and the body will get incinerated in 2 hours the system is unique and one of the first of its kind in india the process also involves collecting the ash after cremation we were so soon informed by the population here that they would accept a solar crematorium only if there was also a guarantee that a body will burn even if there was a piece of cloud coming into the sky so we went ahead and developed a technology now where we can bottle the biogas and now the bio, bo bottle biogas can be brought here and used for solar crematorium in kerala even the cemeteries are turning eco friendly extreme difficulty in acquiring burial grounds 
and soaring land prices are among the factors that have prompted major churches in the state to shift to eco-friendly tombs and reusable graves from the conventional cemeteries. I started it because of the existential need of the time. Because there are a number of uh, problems when persons are buried in the ground that affects the nearby houses, the water sources, all these are affected. But in the new system, nothing will be affected. That is one of the major or principal characteristics of this type of cemeteries. In the beginning, there were certain confusions and uh, difficulties from the part of the people. But I discussed this matter in detail and after a number of discussions with the people, there was a consensus and therefore there were not many objections from the part of the people. People in Kerala are highly appreciated. The Christians, now they are planning to convert from the burial to the cremation because there is no land available and it is cost for a place for a uh, six foot, three foot wide uh, place is uh, cost uh, depends. In the, the town area it is 60 to 70 thousand rupees. Even in the village it is le not less than 10 thousand rupees. So ordinary people can afford that one. In European countries and the US, funeral is a big business. Due to environmental concerns, most of the people today prefer eco-friendly cremations. Even it's mandatory for Indians residing abroad to follow these systems. Driven by limited space, the percentage of Japanese who are cremated has grown steadily, reaching 99% in 2009. In China, 53% of people are cremated, compared to 30% in the United States. New eco-friendly techniques of disposing of the dead body like alkaline hydrolysis using a resumator machine and freeze dyeing using liquid nitrogen are being developed and adopted. Eco-friendly cremations are hygienic, reduce dead body to powdery ash, cost effective, does not have high levels of harmful emission, save holy rivers, time saving, help in saving oxygen for humans and other animals for survival and above all save trees and the environment change is the need of the hour and change we must the day is not far when there would be no trees to cut down and eventually we shall be left with no option but to adopt these eco-friendly techniques only so why not act now and save the trees and our environment. So let us all together collectively take a solemn pledge that we shall, we shall leave a beautiful, cleaner planet for the tomorrow. Just two years back, I told my family my last wish. My wish that I am to be cremated in an eco-friendly way. My wife got angry and my son was shocked. But they could not say anything as it was my wish to save the nature for my grandchildren and their offspring. It was my departing gift to the mother nature who gave everything to me throughout my life. It was my last wish. It was my green wish.